Hi, third graders, and welcome to One Room Schoolhouses. This story goes along with our Journeys Lesson One story, A Fine, Fine School. The genre of this story is informational text. So informational text gives us factual information about a topic. This is an online encyclopedia article. So when it says factual information, that means things that are true. So we're gonna be looking at some facts about schoolhouses. And an encyclopedia is basically a big book that has a ton of information in it. So when I was a kid, we actually had a whole set of encyclopedias in my house and they were very big and very heavy. And so now it's kind of cool that all of that information can be online. So this, this particular story comes from an online encyclopedia article. Okay, so let's look down here where it says text focus. Photographs show true pictures of important text details. So what that means is that we're going to be reading some facts about schoolhouses and then we're going to see some actual photographs to help us picture what it is that we're reading about. And then captions explain a photo or picture. Look at the photos and captions before you read to see what the text will be about. So the first photograph I'm noticing is of a red and it looks to be a one room schoolhouse. And then I see another photograph on page 39 and it says that that is a picture or photo of Mary McLeod Bethune. And then down below her, we have a picture of Lyndon Johnson. And I recognize that name because Lyndon Johnson is a former president of the United States. Okay, let's begin. One room schoolhouses. One room schoolhouses were once common in America. In the early 1900s, there were more than 250,000. Some children today still attend one room schoolhouses. Students of all ages were proud to learn in these small schools. There was usually one teacher and no principal. Daily life. A ringing bell often announced the start of each day. Students did chores, such as bringing in wood for cooking and heating, or raising a flag that soared in the sky above the schoolyard. The teacher worked with one or two students at a time. They studied subjects like reading, math, history, spelling, and handwriting. Students wrote on small slates or blackboards because paper was too expensive. Famous students. Some famous Americans learned in one-room schoolhouses. Mary McLeod Bethune went to one in South Carolina in the late 1800s. She became one of America's great teachers. She fought for civil rights. Former United States President Lyndon Johnson attended a one-room schoolhouse in Texas. Johnson was born near Stonewall, Texas in 1908. He was president from 1963 until 1969. Okay, on our next page, page 40, I see another photograph, and this one has a caption that says, Laura Ingalls Wilder, writer of Little House on the Prairie, strolled several miles to a school like the one shown in the photo below. Wow, so that's an actual picture of a one-room schoolhouse. It looks so neat in there. Schoolhouses today. Some students still study in a one-room schoolhouse. In winter, fewer than 100 people live on Monhegan Island in Maine. It is too far to go to the mainland for classes, so students attend the island's little schoolhouse. In most places, bigger schools opened when one-room schoolhouses became too small. People became worried about losing the fine old buildings. Some became museums. You can tour a school in South Dakota, just like one that writer Laura Ingalls Wilder attended. Other schoolhouses became stores, restaurants, and homes. These little buildings are certainly important pieces of American history. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed learning about one-room schoolhouses, and I will see you next time. Bye.